All right. So this is my 3D file. It's really bare bones at the moment, but that's because I've hidden a lot of stuff just so it doesn't get too heavy and so I can actually show you things. So I've only really modeled all the stuff that is necessary and that's within the view itself. How I do this is basically by having um, layers for each different kind of objects. So that includes if you're doing like objects of the same material, I would suggest you make that into a layer as well and all of your different you know, elements. And how this is going to help is basically once you're working on a specific element, you can hide everything else and just work on that element and then it won't kind of like slow down your file. So for example, if I wanted to work on law, I can just kind of keep that checked and then like turn off all these other ones and that will make it a lot, you know, faster and you know easier and stuff. Um, another thing also is if you go up to window preferences, and this is again, if you're using SketchUp, um, go down to general. I save like I check the auto save to save every 30 minutes I believe by default this is every five minutes so um, that can get really annoying especially if you're like in the middle of modeling and it kind of like freezes to save the whole thing and if your file is really really heavy like mine is it will take a long time to save so I suggest that you boost that up to 30% again still keep your backups still keep backing up your files probably like every week um, and if you're really close to the de deadlines, then every, like at the end of each day, um, once you are setting up different scenes, like I've got here or up here, I would say do them in the hidden line style. So that's this one right here. And that's because it kind of makes it a lot more easier and quicker to use because it doesn't apply any of the like materials or anything or colors. Um, and it just makes it, you know, a lot faster. <laughs> Um, so I'll show you this scene, for example. So this is a minimal scene that I've set up. And this is just without all the really heavy elements. Um, and I think I set this up just because I wanted to work on this specific thing at some point. This second one, I think, is the proper scene. So now you can see all the objects have been added in. And this is probably how I would, you know, go back and forth um, trying to like render and do test renders. Um, and then obviously I've set up like multiple scenes. So I would say, try and do this as early as you can once you've got kind of like your base elements. Um, and what I mean by that is every image is gonna have kind of like a foreground, a middle ground and a background. And so you kind of wanna have like a base set up even if you don't have all the specific details yet, um, just so you can test out those compositions and views. So another thing that I would do is, you know, create these different elements in their own files and then drop them into the render one, just because it makes it quite easy to experiment with in another file. And then you can kind of like bring it in once you're, you know, completely sure that it's, you know, the way you want it. So this is like the first two iterations of this food court render. Um, as you can see, this first one is like super, super grainy. Um, it's kind of just got like bare bones, doesn't have any materials applied yet. Um, and this is mainly just to understand like what I need to be modeling. So for example, here you can see there's a gap. Ideally you don't want any gaps, but obviously you don't want to model anything outside of your view because then it's kind of unnecessary. Um, and then the second like uh, iteration of it is a lot more cleaner. Um, I've added, you know, a lot more elements within it. There's kind of like a lot of detail. But if you look really closely, they're all kind of like duplicated elements. So these are like food court booths. They're all the same booth and one booth is a component that I've kind of like repeated across. And I think like going from this first one to the second one, I've kind of like adjusted the field of view and then also like the output settings for the render itself where I started kind of adding more materials. So you can see here, like added this sort of metallic material, some flooring, some lights, and then another kind of like um, level, I suppose. So going from like this to this takes a lot of time, a lot of kind of like trial and error and stuff. So you have to really bear that, bear that in mind. Um, and then here's where I kind of, you know, again, started to apply more materials. I really also, this is the point where I added the HDRI, so the lighting is a lot more cleaner as well. And then here you can see, you know, adding sort of internal lights, it really lets the materials of the object shine through as well. So in post-production, I'm basically looking for, you know, enhancing the kind of like 
qualities of the render. So now you can assume I finished my render, um, but I still want to, you know, tweak things or maybe I want to test stuff out. This is my, this is how the render turned out. So as you can see, there's um, all kinds of lights going on and then you've got all kinds of different objects um, surrounding it. And at the moment it looks fine. It's quite sort of dull and dark um, and doesn't really give off that food court vibe, which I wanted. So that's why once I went into Photoshop, I kind of started to experiment with different colors and techniques and it doesn't really take much. For me, I didn't really need to add any greenery or any people. So there wasn't necessarily anything to add, more so just to tweak the colors and that kind of thing. So ideally you want to say, I believe it's Photoshop either the 2021 version or the 2022 version. And that's because they've got this feature called a neural. So if you go into filter, uh, obviously just select it on a layer. Uh, filter and you can come down to neural filters so this is fairly new um, and there's kind of like a load of you know tutorials and things online about it as well but it's kind of a really nice um, I guess hack in a sense because it takes you know it takes like a second to apply and it, it can really like change the output of your render um, so I'll show you how I rendered this one if I just edit this and so what I've done is kind of just open my base render from um, from you know wherever I saved it and then opened it in Photoshop. And as you can see, it's kind of like automatically applied a filter. So you have all kinds of different um, tools here in, in this neural filters tab. The one I'm gonna be using is the color transfer. And what that does is it pulls all the colors from another image into your photo and kind of like applies it. So you've got kind of like the built-in ones here. So you can, you know, if you click on this one, it'll change it and you know, it looks okay, but it doesn't again, give off that food court uh, sense and vibe. This one is a bit too like monotonous for me. Um, this one is kind of okay, but again, doesn't really work as well. And you can kind of go in and tweak them in its own um, settings, but I would say leave that and you know make your own um, edits later on using the actual adjustments layer. So for example, um, I think I kind of like stumbled across this and I thought this looks really nice and I never really thought about making the booths like red. The red really works well. So I think I went with this filter, but obviously as you can see, it's quite yellow. Uh, so I really wanted to kind of like cancel out that yellowness and make it a lot more brighter. So initially what I did is just to make some elements um, pop out a little bit more. So what I did was I added a, a mask layer and then kind of like erase or, you know, added stuff onto it just to enhance that. So for this one, I kind of like darkened the um, shutters because they were looking like really like bright. And I didn't really want that. I kind of wanted to have a sort of darkened feel to it. So I added a uh, layer mask on that. And then for this one, for this layer, I kind of just lightened the flooring because it was kind of getting lost in between like all the rest of the stuff going on. Um, and I really wanted to high, like, highlight the sort of checkered feel to it. And then I started to edit the uh, colors itself. So I used the photo filter adjustment layer. You can just add that here at the bottom photo filter. You can also go up here, image um, adjustments and edit these as well. So what I did was added like a cooling filter to cancel out that yellow. Again, this is just a preset. You don't really have to go in and like customize each and every single thing. Um, adjusted like the density of it, just enough so that it looked a lot more kind of like less yellowy, greeny. Um, and I quite liked how that turned out. So then again, there is still quite a lot of yellow so i took the selected color adjustment layer and then edited the i think it's the and like really decreased that so if i turn that on you'll be able to see it goes from being kind of like greenish to a lot more cool toned and a lot more pink added a bit of contrast just because right now it's looking quite flat oh so this is a glow layer so all of these things you can actually just like go onto youtube and find like different tutorials on um, there's a really good channel called Pix Imperfect, I think, and he does really like simple but really like effective um, kind of techniques you have to use in Photoshop. Um, so this is kind of like how you add glow 
to an object so all i did was make a like a plain layer um given it the color dodge uh blending mode and then you go in and you kind of like use a soft brush and you just paint in the white um and then just you know adds a bit of glow to the lighting as well so obviously if you're not getting that effect in v-ray you can always go and add it in photoshop you can also add in kind of like a radial blur and blur out some of the sort of like edges to make that sort of kind of like depth um, a bit more prominent um, there's all kinds of things you can do in, um, in photoshop i suppose but it's all dependent on like what kind of look you're going for